hey guys medicine made easy here back with another video and the topic of today's discussion will be about the bile acid diarrhea now uh, this is a condition where there is the production of excessive uh, excessive and urgent watery diarrhea mainly due to the stimulation of unabsorbed bile salt in the colon now in this condition is mainly of two types the type 1 which is usually idiopathic and type 2 which is usually associated with different conditions uh, for example uh, after post bowel resection mainly the small bowel uh, this condition really arises or after uh, suppose post cholecystectomy or this uh, condition can also occur after microscopic colitis etc and the most common scenario that it presents with is after uh, the person having Crohn's disease to have undergone ileal resection now the problems which arise due to this is uh, like I'll explain it uh, into the picture just given below now if we can see this picture first of all I've told you that after uh, the person has undergone ileal resection that is the his ileum has been resected therefore you can see the small bowel is very small the jejunum has been added to the cecum so here what happens is that we know that the terminal ileum the terminal ileum what it does is that it absorbs the bile salt and through the portal vein it goes to the liver and the liver produces bile which usually again just uh, it occurs in a circle it occurs like a circulation which is called the enterohepatic circulation which mainly is disturbed therefore what happens is that the unabsorbed bile salts they'll go into the colon and what happens here is that the, they stimulate this colon to secrete excessive amount of water plus electrolytes and this excessive secretion of water and electrolytes will ultimately lead to the production of diarrhea watery diarrhea and since the bile salts they can't get back into the liver therefore what happens is that the uh, amount of bile production decreases and when the bile production decreases it ultimately doesn't uh, the bile it doesn't contain as much as bile salts that is needed therefore there occurs fat malabsorption and due to the impairment of the production of mycelia since they're very much important in this process and what happens is that since the bile salt uh, also is not pretty um, is not that much then in the gallbladder the bile acid pool it decreases and therefore the bile becomes lithogenic and it produces a gallstone and since we also know that the ileum is mainly associated with like you know, the absorption of vitamin b12 so the person also presents with decreased vitamin b12 and uh, the last but not the least what happens is that the bile salt has a function that is it uh, what it does is that it usually binds with the calcium present and uh, uh, this unabsorbed bile salt usually binds with this calcium and therefore it what the calcium does is that the calcium usually binds to oxalate and this and they're incorporated into the uh, intestinal lumen and what happens is that this production of uh, the, the bile salt what it does is that it binds to this calcium and this oxalate is absorbed more from the colon and we know that oxalate produces renal calculi so the chance of renal calculi also increases in this condition now 
Therefore, we can see these are the clinical features which a person may present like the water diarrhea, steatoria due to fat malabsorption, anemia due to decreased vitamin B12, gallstones, then uh, renal calculi, what not. Now, the diagnosis is mainly easy, that is we use two tests, that is the 75 selenium homocholinic acid taurine where a radio label selenium is used although this is very expensive and it's not performed worldwide and there is the increase of a marker there is the 7 alpha hydroxycholestin which is raised in this condition and the treatment uh, is mainly by the use of bile salt uh, you know, bile salt binding agents for example the cholestyramine or co Cholecevalum, they usually bind to the bile salt and they mainly help to improve the symptoms of the diarrhea and an altern as an alternative aluminium hydroxide is used and the rest of the treatment is mainly supportive which usually is uh, important for controlling these associated conditions like uh, the person also sometimes have diabetes or they have chronic pancreatitis and uh, different conditions so uh, uh, the treatment is mainly based on the control of the symptoms and also control of the associated conditions. So that's it guys. Be sure to like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.